everyone. Today we're going to be implementing the Omron Hostlink protocol using visualbasic.net. And up on my screen, what you'll see is an overview of the what we call C mode commands or Hostlink commands. And we have a, in this side here, we have a one to one, so one computer to one controller. Over here, we have one to N, so one computer to several different controllers. And Hostlink protocol allows you to talk serially through the COM ports to up to 32 devices. And we do that by assigning it a Hostlink unit number. So um, here's my first one, here's my second one. So what we're going to do is use Visual Basic um, .NET in order to open a serial port, talk to the controller, get the response back, and display that information. So we do that by looking at the um, command response uh, information, and here's my command, and it, all the communication starts with an at sign. Then we have the unit number, um, which is in BCD, so it's 00 to 31, so that gives me 32 devices. We have a header code. This is actually our command code in which we want to do something. In our case, we're going to be reading data memory, so RD, and then the text to follow. That relates to the command code. In our case, it'll be the starting address or the number of, of data memories that we're going to read. Then we have what we call a checksum calculation. This is the FCS. What that will do is it will um, do a mathematical calculation on the unit and um, give you a two character uh, calculation so that when we send out that information we can um, uh, the controller itself reads the app, check some information make sure it's correct so nothing's changed during that transmission and finally on our command we have a asterisk and a carriage return that indicate the termination so the end of the message and then the response from that message, what we get is the at number again, or at sign again. We get our unit number that's responding. We get our header code. Um, and the header code um, is, the, is the same code that we sent out prior. Then we get a, an encode. And the encode uh, just indicates whether or not the information actually got there or not, or went out. And then we get the text. If it's reading information, this would be the information that we actually will read from the controller. Again, we get our checksum, we return from the controller so we can check and make sure that the message is validated. And then we have the termination again, which is the asterisk and carriage return. So that's the information that we're actually sending out. And here's a, a example of the timing. So here, here's our command. Then, if it's at more than 131 characters, we get a delimitator, which is just the carriage return. It doesn't have the asterisk in front of it. So then what we do is we add another delimitator, and then it will send us the next 128 characters. If they're still not the end, we won't see a terminator again. We'll see a delimitator. So again, it will then um, send us just a delimitator. We send a, a delimitator, and it gives us the next message, and finally we'll get a terminator. And then we'll have the uh, the whole message that the uh, computer then sends to us. So this goes back and forth. And then we have the um, C mode commands, and there are all the commands here that we can actually utilize. And if we look at the data memory read, that's exactly what we'll be sending out. So we're going to send out the at sign, the unit number, header code, the beginning word, and a number of words that we're looking for the checksum and the terminator and we will, what we will receive back is the at sign, the unit number, header code, end code, and then the first data memory word, the seconds, etc. until we get all of them back and we'll read 10 uh, data memory registers. Then we'll get our checksum and our terminator. So what we'll do is um, we will take a look at our PLC and let me just here we go so our here's our plc and right now you can see that we are communicating we'll see our light flashing down here 
And so we're doing that by using our CX programmer, which is here. And we are actually uh, monitoring, monitoring mode. And um, you can see that we are communicating back and forth. And this is using our uh, USB connector that's located right on our CPU itself. And if I look at my data memory area, here's my data memory area, and we're actually looking at the value zero, data memory zero to data memory nine. This is what we're actually looking at here. So they're being updated all the time and we can change them at will. Now let's go and call up our Visual Basic. Here we go. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create a form and I have a form here in front of me and the form shows me data memory zero to data memory nine. We also have a transmit to show me what I'm transmitting out and what I'm receiving back in. So I can see the actual uh, communication code going back and forth. Now, if we look at the code, what we do here is we have public strings here. We have a transmit, we have the checksum, we have the receive. Then everything in here works off of a timer. So what we're doing is we're setting a timer for 100 milliseconds. And every 100 milliseconds, what it will do is it turns off the timer. It sets the system date, so we can see that. If the uh, serial port is open as false, then what it does is try to open it. Then what we do is we um, we look at the characters. We get our transmit signal, which is going to be at 00, which is a unit number. Read data memory, starting at 0000, and we're going to read 0010 of them. Then what we do is we call our get sum calculation, which we'll show you later. We label um, what we're sending out as the transmit plus the checksum plus the asterisk, which is our terminator. We call our communication, which we'll get to it. So we'll communicate, then we'll bring back uh, the information. Then we'll close the serial port up again. Then we'll label um, the response, the RDX, the information that came back from our controller. Then what we do is we take that information that came back and we split it up and we populate our, our registers that we see on our main form screen. And then what we do is we uh, enable a timer again so this whole process starts again. So if we look back here, we can see our serial port. And under the properties, our serial port here, we're going to, everything defaults to 9600, even 72 for communication with Omron serial ports. So here we have 9600, seven data bits, even parity. We have, um, and change it back to even. We have two stop bits and our port number is port com five. So that's where we're communicating out of. So if we look at our timer, our timer is set for an interview uh, or interval of 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, I'm going to grab um, uh, more information or send that same command out between commands. So it's 100 milliseconds. All right. And so if we look back at the code, what you'll see here is our next is our checksum calculation. And this is actually how we do it. So we do exclusive or on all the uh, uh, bytes of information within there, and then we convert it back into a hex value. Our communication, what we do is um, we set the response to zero. We set up our buffer, which is our buffer is going to be our transmit, our checksum calculation, our asterisk, and our carriage return, which is CHR13. Then we send that information at the serial port by, by just going serial port one right and then our buffer. Then what we do is we actually sleep for 50 milliseconds. What this is necessary is every time I send that out on a port, if the computer is busy, it kind of rejects this. So I found that um, if we sleep for about 50 milliseconds, then everything works even though we're communicating out uh, 
we're doing right now with our uh, current, we're communicating using CX Programmer to our PLC currently. Then what we do is we set our serial port timeout to be 100 milliseconds. Then what we do is we um, take our read value and we'll read our serial port up to the carriage return. So what we're, what we're doing is reading the information to the carriage return. So if an error occurs, so after that 100 millisecond timeout, then what we'll do is our response will actually say communication error. And then what we do is once we um, end that try, we will get our checksum calculation returned. Then we will um, strip that out and get our, our information out of here, our transmit. And then what we do is we can actually call our checksum calculation to verify that checksum that we expect is what we return for that same information. And if it's not, then we do communication error as well. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is um, we'll take a look at our hardware that we have here. And on here we have our, our COM port and it is a RS-485 communication that we have here. We go through a USB um, a serial converter and what this is is a so it converts it from the USB into RS-485 and this particular model is a uh, USB uh, 485M from Automation Direct and it's going back into my controller and that there is links in the site that will actually explain how to hook that up and monitor that you have the right COM port. So let's start this up and here is my form in action. You can see here that this is what I'm transmitting so I'm asking for the first 10 data memory areas and this is what's returning and you can see here here are my data memories that are being populated. So if I look back at my areas here, you can see these numbers correspond to the appropriate data memory that I'm monitoring. Now if I were to change this, this is going through the CX programmer software, and we'll set the value instead of 1, 2, 3, 4 for the first one, we'll go 5, 6, 7, 8. As soon as I hit enter, it changes it here, but also changes there almost at the same time, probably 100 milliseconds later, just like we, we planned on. And back on um, the last one, DM9, if I change this now to um, a value of A, you'll see that almost instantaneously changes to the A. So you see that's very straightforward and we'll also notice that because we have the try what I will do is we will disconnect our communication link and when I do it stops communicating and it shows the communication error on the receive. Once I plug it back in again the communication resumes and I continue with my information being updated on my form. All right, now all the links and information can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. It will also go through more detail on the setup of the dip switch settings, etc. that we have in our PLC, as well as the links to take you over and set up your RS-485 communication or RS-232 and the pinout that we need for that. Now, if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.